Yeah, well, back really here at Sunny Fun, uh, yeah, we're now looking at the rev off, trike, which we saw in its um, transport form before. Yep. Uh, now we're seeing it in the ready to fly form. Sure Dan Johnson talking with Larry Medvick and looking for a few we more details about this from, uh, interesting Lakeland, creation. Uh, but a little background. This is the same company, Evolution Trikes, that brought you the Revo, which is, in my opinion, the, the top end, the Cadillac, the Mercedes, whatever you want to call it, of trikes. It's just a beautiful piece of work. You're using that same technique here, I can see. It's just really handsome hardware, very clever design. Uh, let's walk through it a little bit. First of all, what powers it on a, what's your usual power plant for this single place trike? Our standard engine is the Kawasaki 440. Uh, featured here, we have our optional MZ201, which is a 626 cc engine, a little bit bigger. You get an extra five horsepower out of that. And uh, we're also gonna be uh, looking into some electric propulsion systems. And uh, I also have a smaller motor coming out that'll be electric start more on that later. Uh, these are pull start. The machine is to I see it's right over your head here, so it's pretty easy to get at. Yep, you can start from the pilot seat, which is pretty nice. And uh, right now we are at the maximum legal weight. Um, you can have the big tires with the parachute, which gives us a 24 pound weight allowance. The parachute doesn't weigh 24 pounds. Right. You can go with the small tires without the parachute. Or, like I said, we are working on a slightly smaller motor with electric start that'll still make the part 103. But this one, as we see here, or at least configured in the stock style, will make part 103. It just makes it at 278 with the ballistic curve. Which is perfectly permitted right in the AC guidelines. So, okay, so just a little review for those that don't know. Part 103, no pilot license needed, no medical needed, no end numbers needed, and you can build it ready to fly. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, uh, you got some nice instrumentation here when we saw you connect up things uh, you got a nice little screen down here you got switches down here but they're all out of the way here nothing blocking your view you can look down and catch the information and whose unit are you using here this is the MGL extreme this is an option but uh, what normally comes is a digital CHT, a digital EGT with a tiny tack, which does not only tack, but also your Hobbs meter. This unit gives you all kinds of stuff, BSI, airspeed, altimeter, oh, it's USA. brilliant color, and it even has GPS, well, no moving today, map, yeah. but it actually uh, does allow you to plug into an airport, tell you how to get there. Uh, not that you're going anywhere real South far Africa, at 43 miles an hour. Well, that's all right, though. It's nice to have oh, that. The MGL side side guys do a nice job, so I'm glad to see you using their hardware. Absolutely. Uh, now, uh, talk to us a little bit more about the suspension on this, because a lot of Part 103 aircraft, in order to keep the weight, don't really have any suspension. And, you know, they're light. They don't need it too badly, but it's nice to have. You go bouncing down a grass runway that's got some lumps to it. I always kind of felt like, wow, that's the whole airplane taking the load then. You're relieving that somewhat. You know, well, yeah, this design was actually uh, done about 10, 10, 12 years ago, uh, maybe even longer than that, with uh, J.P. Kruger, which is the original innovator of the uh, the Signet, uh, way before, and uh, the plane really never took off. It was an all-land base. It was called a Tundra, which had a single front swing arm, and I actually owned one of those, and after getting rid of it, I always missed all that travel in the front end, and uh, to have the forks themselves do the kind of dampening that you can get with a swing arm, uh, it just was never equal so we designed in an actual swing arm and we use four composite flex rods here oh, here I see. that's what that is and we have two in the back so the entire unit is using four flex rods for all wheel suspension and this is a true bush strike uh, this will in a, a stole situation short field take off and landing this machine will compete with the best aircraft out there and that includes some that are uh, six figures at this point well very cool i'm looking behind your head here larry and I'm seeing that this construction back here where my hand is uh, relieves a common problem on many trikes and there's some wonderful trikes but one of the problems they often have is a mass right behind your head most of us wear a helmet when we fly a trike and your head goes back against that thing and you get quite a buzz out of it yeah, you're we, avoiding that problem well we actually call it the roll cage mast and what's special about this mast is yes it, it, it you know I can lean my head all the way back there's no head clearance issues and this is out of my peripheral vision by the way yeah 
but what this does, it is a completely triangulated uh, uh, structure, which allows us to eliminate having that compression. That's some of the duty done by these extra set of struts, one one notch back there. Absolutely, and the fact that this frame is one piece from underneath where it's sitting, replica all of the way up. Oh, German I see. Yeah, that's wrapping all the way up there. Well, that's a, a nice, bit, some nice, short. really nice tube bending on here too. Really nice. It's all 6061 T6, except we have some chromoly inserts in three different spots. And so we've mixed a 4130 chromoly in this high load stress spot. We've used the lightweight aluminum where we could get away with that. And overall, we have built a very, very robust part one. How long have you been in development? Next this aircraft track? is also this a, is a lot of replica. It's a very original trike. The yeah. trike's been around a while. There's a lot of variation. So to do something different is nothing small. Uh, believe it or not, the concept of unplugging the front end and having a triangulated mast where the back wheels would leave the ground and the engine would counterbalance so that anybody could put the wing up and down easily, I've had in my mind since before the Revo's inception. Is that right? However, uh, we were That goes back a few years now. What did the Revo uh, six years at Sun Fun ago. Uh, six years ago at Sun okay, Fun right. um, And then basically we were working on a two-place version, and it was just at Oshkosh last year that I, uh, my girlfriend Amy was flying the Revo back from Oshkosh. So I had several hours, about eight hours a day for two days, to sit in the back daydreaming. <laughs> and by the time I got back from Oshkosh, I had designed this aircraft in my head. <laughs> I worked with a good friend of mine, um, Dan Saunders, who is a uh, SolidWorks expert. As we put this thing into SolidWorks and in one week with the SolidWorks drawings that we had created, uh, we were able to, at the power chute factory, build the rolling uh, prototype. Now, I thought I was going to get to take it home because I was really excited. I built this machine because I wanted one. Ah, Not okay. because I thought other people might yeah, like it as much as I wanted one. And this is in my head what the Revo wasn't. It was to fill in this void that I couldn't do the things I could do with this with the Revo. So I couldn't take it home because we had to build all of the jigs and uh, it got very complicated after that. We can produce yeah, all of these frames. fancy bending and whatnot. You don't just pull that out of a box. So we have a, a, an incredible jig system. We can produce a frame a day and uh, all the holes are going to be identical. We use a lot of CNC parts on this. And uh, that took the longest part of it, but here it is, it's something fun in April. So under a year of uh, actual development, thanks to SolidWorks and some hard work. It's amazing how uh, small airplane companies, as all of these are out here, can use that high-end software that, oh, 10 years ago, that was only for Boeing or whoever. And now you guys could put that to good use. That's really cool. I got to ask you, and I'll caution our viewers here, prices change. We'll give you a web address later. You'll find out what the new number is. But I, and I don't need an exact. But hopefully put me in the we ballpark have. On this. Yeah, hopefully we have the, uh, the everything figured out, and we won't be having any price increases. Yeah. Uh, Seventeen <laughs> nine is ready to fly, and that'll come with just uh, standard instruments: CHT, EGT, tachometer, hour meter, just what you need. Uh, it'll come in white, red, or yellow. It'll come with a Dacron sailcloth. The small tires, I suspect people will pay the 500 bucks to get these Tundra tires, which also comes with a hydraulic uh, Black Max disc brake. And um, there's a bunch of other things. The parachute is a very nice option at $4,000. Figure if it saves your life twice, it's paid for itself. <laughs> and uh, we have an all Mylar sale on this at $1,000. And uh, beyond that, uh, this machine as it sits is in the low 30s with a Flycom. And it's an $800 uh, GA style helmet. We've got the radio in here at $1,750. So we're using very, very high quality components. These are a lot of the same uh, features we find in the Revo. And so we're not trying to really do anything inexpensive as much as we're trying to do it well. But you can go down as low as 17,000. That's the bottom end of this. That would still be almost everything we see. It's an excellent flying aircraft at that. You may want the seat cushion at 300 bucks, uh, give you a little more cushion. Uh, otherwise, it's a nice warm racing seat that I'm sitting on either way. And uh, it's weatherproof at that without the seat cushion. So it's your choice. Great. So 17 into the 30s, prices change, contact the factory. But I am really impressed, Larry. This is, again, some very nice work. I love the Revo all these years. All six years and uh, now I'm in love with the rev so this is very cool nice, nice work and I love that it's 103 and that you were able to keep it in that range uh, with the parachute of course which I love so all good stuff
a lot of great information that we've gotten here. I don't know that we've left hardly anything out. Um, you do have a hand throttle or not? Uh, the hand throttle is not anything we're offering now, but I suspect it's going to be a popular now, demand item. Um, that hand throttle. We're at the limit. Uh, if it weighs less than a pound, we can talk about it. Uh, so small tires and a hand throttle, you may have to start swapping options at that point. Yeah, sure. So I can see ways you can go about that. But the foot pedals are so nice and comfortable that riding around in the foot throttle, it's what we do in a car. It's not exactly hard work. So. It's not the type of machine like a Revo that you set the cruise at 100 miles an hour and go 200 miles. This is something you're usually zipping around and driving it like a go-kart in the sky. Right. You're going to have more fun maneuvering on this. Not a straight line machine. Yeah. Well, let's ask a couple of questions. We talked about how much, but how soon then? When could you have one of these? We are it today. What, what would be the answer? We are accepting orders. We've already got uh, quite a few uh, commitments uh, at this show here at Sun and Fun. It's been okay. a great turnout. Excellent. And, and so, uh, when, delivery when time is our standard 12 week delivery time. Okay. Okay, so, and then uh, transporting it now, we saw how cool it was, uh, you can't really put it in a truck because you got the wings attached and everything, so it'd be it's a little a, It's a that. hair too big to put in the back of a pickup truck, although we tried. <laughs> and uh, what we found but is... But you uh, use a trailer, is that it? And, and the smallest of trailers, uh, the trailer only needs to be the footprint of the cart. Okay. So any little Home Depot trailer that people might already have, uh, we are going to be coming out with a custom all aluminum uh, with uh, rolls axle trailer, the highest quality. Something you can pull behind your Honda. Okay, very cool. Okay, great stuff, Larry. Uh, let's talk about a website address. We'll put it up on a screen. Just tell us where to send people. Same place, evolutiontrikes.com, home of the Revo and the Rev now. All right, very good. You can find lots more about the Revo, more on this as I learn more, and all kinds of other aircraft of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Larry Mitnick and myself here at Summit.